My name is Merritt Moore. We're located here, and we live here in Jonesboro, Tennessee, in the northeast tip of the state. It's the Appalachian end of the state, and we are in the valley, though. We're in the, in the Tennessee Valley. So we're surrounded by mountains, but not in the mountains. So I grew up here, and I left at 18 years of age to go to college, and I was gone for almost 40 years. I had no idea when I got back here that I would fall in love with insects so completely. And one, one piece of growing up here that is related, oddly, is snow. When I grew up, we had seasonal snows, beautiful, soft, falling, just the kind of snow that would accumulate maybe four to five inches, enough to play in and sled in and, and have a magic, magical transformation of the world. And I loved it. I just loved it. You know, you go out and you stick your tongue out and get that snow. And we had snowball fights and we made snowmen and we sled it down a very, very steep hill that was probably a quarter mile straight down. And the parents would block off the end of the road so no cars would come up. And it was just a thrill. It was both the silence of the snow after you have a, a snowfall that's natural and gentle and beautiful. You have the kind of silence that occurs after a piece of music, that sort of full appreciation of silence. So there's no more snow like that. The only snows we get now are from a polar vortex, which are extreme snows and extreme and unnatural and untimely freezes. And we have warm Februaries. And that has really affected our ability to raise honeybees and to keep native bees alive. We do not take honey. We let the bees keep the honey. It helps them to overwinter. We do not open them and inspect them and smoke them. We want to allow them to protect themselves with a layer of, it's like rosin, called propolis. It is their protective envelope inside the hive. Whenever we open it up and pull frames to see, oh, how's the brood doing? Or, you know, is the queen still here? Um, that disrupts them. So we let them be, and we have lost our hives. Um, in fact, in the last few years, Washington County as a whole had lost about 90% of, of beehives, its beehives. And that is a result of several things. When it is warm in February, the bees during the winter are supposed to stay clustered, stay together, and they vibrate to keep themselves warm. They need to keep a constant temperature. But when it's warm, say on a February morning, and they go out foraging because it's warm, and they look for food, but there is no food. Well, I would say we got here in August of 2014, and 2015 was a pivotal year. Not only did we deal with Steve's cancer, and we started um, raising bees, but Francis Lamberts insisted that I become a part of um, the Northeast Tennessee chapter of Citizens Climate Lobby. La Francis Lamberts is um, our Rachel Carson, who was the best known environmentalist um, in the United States, and she was responsible for the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, Rachel Carson wrote books uh, back in the 60s. She influenced uh, Richard Nixon and uh, to take action. She wrote Silent Spring. And so we at CCL created the Rachel Carson Award just so we could give it to Frances. Frances is a force of nature. She has created 
the Arboretum with 40 kinds of, um, you know, native trees and countless kinds of native plants. Her own property is a paradise of, uh, of nature, in my view. So it was Francis who insisted, and I could never say no to Francis, so even then, and so I got involved. But she wanted me to lobby the senator, and that was not my thing. I'm not a schmoozer, I'm not political, but that's what she wanted me to do, so I tried. But I just kept on going, and um, Citizens Climate Lobby I really love, because it has become such a joyful community of action. Um, a global community like the Climate Stories Project, and a joyful one, supportive, informational. Um, so CCL has opened up to me um, just a wonderful, wonderful community of learning and action and, and whimsy, really, and fun.